Good morning, precious saints. You know we love you guys. We love coming to you in the word of the living God. And this morning, I'm going to be sharing with you seven ways to resist the devil. Seven ways to resist the devil. But before I go into the word of God, just lift your hands to heaven with me on this precious morning. Oh, we love you, Lord. Come on, talk to him. Open your mouth and love on him. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. Come on and love on Jesus this morning. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, just lift your hands to heaven and love on him. He alone is worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Father God, as I'm about to take your people into the precious word of God, I pray that the Holy Ghost would open their eyes, open their ear to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. Open their spiritual eyes to see. Open their hearts to be receptive. I pray that this word would give someone the victory over the devil because your word says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Father, bless your people this morning. Strengthen them. Encourage them. You see exactly what they're going through. You see exactly, you know exactly the word that they need to hear this morning. And I pray that you would use this word to give them the victory in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands for just a few more minutes. We love you, Lord. Come on, just tell him you love him, you love him, you love him. My God, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder, when I in awesome wonder, Consider all the worlds, the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, I hear the rolling thunder, your power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great. Thou All right, precious saints, we are about to jump into the word of the living God. Now, what I felt the Holy Ghost wanted me to take my time and share with you on this morning broadcast is seven ways to resist the devil. And we will see this exemplified or we will see this manifested in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is our perfect example. Remember, he is the word made flesh. So I'm taking you into the book of Luke chapter 4. We'll read, we'll look at from verses 1 through 14, and we will see how the Holy Ghost work in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ to resist the devil. Amen? Now watch this. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verses 1. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Let me read that again. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And listen, I want you to see this now. This is the first thing I want to share with you. The first way to resist the devil is to be led by the Holy Ghost. You know, the Bible says in the book, of Romans chapter 8 verse 14. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God 
are the sons of God. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19 says, when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the spirit of the living God will raise up a standard against him. So without the Holy Ghost, you are no match for the devil. I want you to hear me real good. Without the Holy Ghost, who Jesus prayed that God would send, and God sent him on the day of Pentecost, and he's been with us ever since. Listen. Without the Holy Ghost, you are no match for the enemy because when David defeated Goliath, he did it because the spirit of the living God was on David. When Samson defeated the Philistines, he did it because the spirit of God was on him. When Jephthah defeated the Ammonites, he did it because the spirit of the living God was on his life. Even Jesus said, the spirit of God is on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Remember when Jesus was casting the devils out. Jesus said, I cast out devils by the spirit of the living God. So it's the Holy Ghost who empowers us to be able to resist the devil. So the first way we resist the devil is by being led by the Holy Ghost, by being filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Now let's move, let's move right on. Listen, let's go on to verse two. After the Holy Ghost led Jesus into the wilderness, I want you to hear me good. After he led him into the wilderness, verse 2 says, being 40 days tempted by the devil, and in those days Jesus ate, he ate nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. This is something that's not popular in the church today, but it still exists. You know, remember? So the second way we resist the devil is by fasting. Remember, in the book of Matthew, Jesus said, Jesus said, when you fast unto God in private, he said, your father who sees you privately will reward you openly. Remember in the book of Esther, when Haman had a wicked plot to destroy the Jews, Esther said, I need you to fast for me three days and three nights. And after that, I'm going to stand before the king. Of course, her life right there represent the life of Jesus. He was in the grave three days. Amen. And on the third day, he arose and said, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. And after they fasted for three days, we, we know what happened. Haman's evil plot was totally shattered, destroyed, and shut down. And Haman himself got hung on the very gallows that he designed to hang Mordecai the Jew on. So when we fast before God, we overcome the enemy. We overcome the plots of the devil. Are you listening to me? Whatever evil plot it is that Satan is working through people to come against us, that thing is thwarted. Now, I want to read this to you. You know, the Bible says something very powerful concerning fasting in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says in Isaiah 58 verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Listen, some of you need to fast. Your finances are in trouble. You need to fast. Your marriage is in trouble. You need to fast. Your children are hanging out with the wrong company. You need to go on a fast. Are you listening to me? You're being attacked on that job. You need to fast and set time alone with God and turn the plate upside down and seek God. It may be half a day, a day. However, the Holy Ghost leads you. It's not the length of time. It's being led by the Holy Ghost. So the Bible says when you fast, it loose the bands of wickedness. It, it causes heavy burdens to be removed. It allows, the, it causes the oppressed to be set free and it breaks or destroys every yoke of the devil. Are you listening to me? Listen, and so I believe the Holy Ghost may be stirring some of you to fast and pray and turn your plate upside down. So when we look into the book of Luke chapter four, First, we see Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost. That's verse 1. And in verse 2, Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. God may not be calling you to fast 40 days and 40 nights, but he expects you to do some type of fast. Remember when, when the disciples, they were not able to cast the demons out of the little boy, and Jesus told the father, bring the boy to me. And Jesus cast the devil out of the little boy and set him free. And when, they, when the, the disciples got alone privately with Jesus, they said, why could not we cast the devil out? Jesus Jesus said, look, some of these things can only come out by prayer 
and fasting. So if you are praying and praying and praying and you're worshiping and you're saying no change, it's time to turn your plate upside down because when we fast, listen, fasting is not magical, but what it does is it causes us to become extra sensitive to, to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. It allows us to get rid of all of the distractions from around us, which we desperately need in this generation with all the fancy devices and everything we have. We are distracted almost all day long. So it's, it's really, it's very important that you, it's vital that you set time apart to seek God through prayer and fasting. And that's what Jesus was doing here. So let's move right, right along. Let's go into verse three. And the Bible says, and the devil said unto him, if you be the son of God, in verse three of Luke four, command this stone to be turned into bread. Verse four of Luke four says, and Jesus answered him saying, it is is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So the third way we resist the devil is by knowing the word of God, by being full of the word of God, by taking time out to, to study God's word and to meditate on the word of God. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15 says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who need not to be ashamed, rightly or correctly dividing the word of truth. So we see it's vital that you get into the word of God, study the word of God, listen to other men and women of God, teaching the word of God. That's how you get it even better. You know, if you are growing in your relationship with God and you don't understand some things, it's very important that you listen to men and women of God who are full of the Holy Ghost and full of the word of God, who can teach you the word of God, who are gifted to take the scriptures and break it down to the point that even a child can understand it. I want you to hear me good. So the third thing you need to do if you're going to resist the devil, I mean, the third way to resist the devil is by knowing the word of God. And we know the word became flesh and dwell among us. Amen. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ is the word of God. Are you hearing me? Let's move right on. Verse five says, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto Jesus, all this power will I give you and the glory of them for it has been delivered to me. And it was, it was delivered to him by Adam and Eve when they disobeyed God. And Satan said unto whomsoever I will, I can give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Oh, I love Jesus' answer. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Jesus was quoting unto him, Exodus chapter 34, verse 34. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shall worship the Lord thy God and him only shall thou serve. So the fourth, the fourth way we resist the devil is by our commitment to worship God alone. That's what Exodus chapter 34 verse 14 says, for thou shalt worship no other God for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. So Jesus was whipping the devil with the word of God and Jesus resisted him. We're not going to worship the devil. That's why you can't be compromising and listening to this devilish ungodly music out there. When you compromise and listen to that garbage, you open your spirit up to demonic forces. You open yourself up to even getting demon possessed and then you are wondering why you can't get a breakthrough you are wondering why you you feel like God is 10,000 miles away from you the Bible says your sins have separated you from your God so you got to get rid of all this garbage and come back to God and say Lord forgive me I'm just gonna worship you and worship you alone come on give me my tool just lift your hands to heaven for just a few minutes right now come on lift your hands to heaven Oh God, we worship you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. Come on, open your mouth and love him for just a few minutes. We love you, Lord. We love you, we love you, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Jesus said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Praise God. What a mighty word right there. Now moving right along, let's go into verse 
Let's go into verse 9 of Luke 4. The Bible says, And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. I want you to see this devil is very aggressive. Now this is God in the flesh. The devil is tempted. I want you to hear me. Christ is rebuking him and the devil keeps coming back. Oh, but the devil's getting a whip and you're going to see what's about to happen here in a minute. Listen to verse 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And this is what Satan said to Jesus. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from here. For it is written, God will give his angels charge over you and they will keep you. The devil was misquoting Psalm chapter 91. Listen to what he said in verse 11. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto Satan, it is said, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Listen, so the fifth way we resist the devil is by standing your ground, by speaking the word, the, the word of God with the authority that you receive from the word. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 says, for whatsoever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. So you got to take your authority over the devil and say, Satan, hold up. We bind you. We resist you. I refuse to allow you to destroy my family. I refuse to sit by and whine and cry about it and allow you to steal up my finances. So you got to rise up in your faith and open your mouth and talk to the devil. Some people don't believe the devil is real. Some people don't believe he exists, but he is absolutely real and he, he does exist. And this is why Jesus had to rebuke him because he is our arch enemy. So you got to stand your ground. You got to fight him with the authority that you receive from the word. The apostle, the apostle James said it like this in James chapter four, verse seven, James said, submit yourself therefore to God resist the devil. That means to stand your ground. Resist the devil. That word right there also means to fight back. It says resist the devil and he will flee from you. You are not supposed to run from the devil. The devil is supposed to run from you. That's why when Jesus would be preaching in the synagogues, the devil would cry out for fear and said, have you come to torment us? Man, this, this has happened in some of our meetings where the power of God came on us as we were preaching the gospel and demons began to cry out and manifest in the people because they are no match for our God. When the real anointing of the Holy Ghost shows up, that devil, that devil have to cries like a coward because he is no match. Shakarababasata. I said, aren't you tired of crying and, and, and feeling like giving up? Isn't it about time we make the devil cry? I said, when you walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, that devil will cry. That devil will back up. That devil will flee. And that word that James used when he said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That word flee actually means he will flee from you being tormented. He will flee from you being terrified. My God. God, somebody shout and help me give God a praise. Resist the devil and he'll flee. So the first way we resist the devil is by being led by the Holy Ghost. The second way is by fasting. The third way is by knowing the word of God. The fourth way is our commitment to worship God alone. The fifth way is by standing your ground and speaking back to the devil with the authority that you receive from the word of God. Now let's move on to point number six. I want to read this here. I want to read this number six. I point as the sixth way we resist the devil. The sixth way we resist the devil. The Bible says this is by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Let me read this to you. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost here. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says this. And they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Watch this. They overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb. They overcame him by the blood. The blood of Jesus works. That's why when when God was about to deliver Israel from out of the land. I just play my soft music. I feel the anointing flowing here. That's why when God was about to bring the children of Israel from out of the land of Egypt, Moses said, kill an innocent lamb, a lamb without blemish, which was symbolic to Christ. And when you, when you kill this lamb, I want you to take the blood of this lamb and wipe it on the sides of the doorpost, the sides and on the top which represent the blood of Jesus. And, and listen, 
Moses told Moses told the people that when God see the blood, he the death angel when he's passing through and he see the blood on the doorpost, he will have to pass over you. But it just goes to let us know the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has power over the devil. The devil is no match for the child of God who understand the power of the blood. It might be old school, but it works. I dare you to open your mouth and say, devil, I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. I've been bought with the blood of Jesus. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. My sins have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. My God, and we got more power than the devil because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. So they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You cannot be ashamed of Jesus. He said, if you be ashamed of me here, I'll be ashamed of you. When you stand before my Father and the Holy Angels, you got to testify. Let the world know you've been saved. That's why I, listen, I, I'm, I'm happy to testify and tell the world, January the 3rd, 2.30 in the morning, I surrendered my life to Jesus. It was 1993. My sins are forgiven. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And I'm on my way to heaven. My God and the devil does not have more power than me because Christ lives in me. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. The Apostle John said, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. The Apostle Paul said, what should we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So the sixth way to resist the devil it's by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. It said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That word overcome right there, it actually means to subdue the devil, to conquer the devil, to prevail over the devil, and to get the victory over the devil. So you prevail. You conquer the devil. You carry off the victory. You overcome him every single time. You plead the blood of Jesus against him. And you share your testimony with the world of what God has done in your life. You overcome that old slewfoot. My God, he's in trouble with this word. Listen, the seventh way, the seventh way we resist the devil is by our faith in God. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And whoever comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Listen to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. The Bible says, above all, taking up the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. It's one thing for Pastor Sean to stand and resist the devil for you. But it's another thing for you to get a hold of your rights and take your rightful place and begin to take up the shield of faith, which is your confidence in God, your confidence of what Christ accomplished on Calvary Cross, that he defeated the devil, that he stripped the devil, and you rise up in your faith, rise up in your authority, and you begin to resist every fiery dot. The Bible says, taking up the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench not some but all the fiery doubts of the enemy that means because of your faith in the word of god because of your faith in the shed blood of the lord jesus christ because of your faith in his death burial and resurrection you've got power with god to quench all the fiery doubts of the enemy so let's rehearse this real quick these are the seven ways you resist the devil by being led by the Holy Ghost, by fasting, that's number two, by knowing the word of God, that's number three, by your commitment to worship God alone, number four, and to stand your ground by speaking the word of God and binding the devil, according to Matthew 18 and 18. That's the fifth point. The sixth point is by pleading the blood of Jesus, because the Bible says in Revelation, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. The seventh point is your faith in God. The Bible says, taking up the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery doubts of the enemy. Now listen to Luke chapter 4 verse 13. The Bible says, And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he left Jesus for a season. He had to leave Jesus because he got stopped. Jesus resisted him. Jesus defeated the devil on his 40 day and 40 night fast. And I believe this was a preview 
of what was about to happen on Calvary. Jesus defeated the devil all through his life, my God. And the same Jesus who defeated the devil, that's the same Jesus who lives in us. And he empowers us through the power of the Holy Ghost to overcome the enemy, to defeat every principality, every power, every rule of the darkness of this world, every spiritual wickedness in high places. Come on, saints, you give too much credit to the devil, talking about his witchcraft. Oh yes, witchcraft is real, but it is no match for the power of God. It is no match for the name of Jesus. It is no match for the blood of the Lamb. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Yeah, for you are great. My God, lift your hands. You do miracles so great. There is no one. There is no one else like you. Come on and worship him. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles. You do miracles so great. There is no one. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. You will apply yourself to these seven ways. And when you do, the devil have no choice but to flee from you because you are a blood-bought child of God. Christ didn't shed his blood on Calvary for the devil to trample you. The Bible says, Jesus said in Luke, in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Behold, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. And absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt you. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rise up against you in judgment it shall be condemned. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. I bind every attack. I rebuke the devil that's come against your soul, that's come against your finances, that's come against your marriage. Come on, rise up and pray along with me. Don't just listen. Open your mouth and take your rightful place. This is training for you. You are training for reigning. Are you listening to me? Open your mouth. Take your authority. Show God that you believe his word. Open your mouth and say, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I resist you in the name of Jesus. I take my rightful place as a child of God. I take my authority this morning and I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you, Satan. I command you to go loose my marriage, loose my children, loose my finances, loose my health. I rebuke the sickness from out of your body right now. I take authority over that foul devil of cancer. That devil is cancer. I curse it out of your body. That devil of blindness, I rebuke it. You spirit of deafness, I command you to come out. Paralyzed legs, I command you to work. Heart disease, I command you to be healed. Asthma, I rebuke it. Autism, I rebuke it. High blood pressure, low blood pressure, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, I rebuke it. Heart arrhythmia, I rebuke it. Bladder infection, I rebuke it. Kidney disease, I rebuke it. Liver disease, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I rebuke rheumatoid arthritis from out of your body. Fibromyalgia, I rebuke it from out of your body. In the name of Jesus, someone is being healed in their spine right now. Spinal bifida. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your heads to the soles of your feet. Gingivitis, I rebuke it. Tonsillitis, I rebuke it. Pain in the shoulders, I rebuke it. Pain in the legs, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Prostate cancer, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Migraine headaches, brain tumors, I take authority over every foul devil of sickness and infirmity. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out of their bodies. Loose them in the name of Jesus. For their body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Loose them and let them go. Loose their marriages. Loose their finances. Loose their family. Satan, we resist you in the name of Jesus. You are no match for the name. We command you to go. We command you to flee in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout and help me give him praise this morning. Give him praise, 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 give him praise. 
Yeah. I feel a breakthrough. I feel it. I feel a spirit lifting from off of your atmosphere. There's a shift happening. Many of you are being healed right now in your bodies. Receive your miracle. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Pain is leaving your body. Stomach ulcers is being healed in the name of Jesus. Fibroid tumors in the name of Jesus. Someone's uterus is being healed. A woman that has been barren for a long time. You and your husband have been praying for children. The Holy Ghost is breaking that spirit of barrenness from off of your body. Your wombs are being opened. You will be fruitful from this day. Get ready. Go buy your crib. You will have a kid in nine months. In the name of Jesus. That court case is about to be overturned in the name of Jesus. You who have been jobless for a long time. That devil is defeated. The job, you're about to get the job. You're about to get a phone call for the interview. You will be hired in the name of Jesus. My God, someone's debts are about to be canceled. I feel the spirit of prophecy. Somebody help me give him a praise. Somebody help me praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Yeah. Yeah. The devil is no match for our God. The devil is no match for our God. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. And he said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. We love you. We love you. And for you who, who does not know Jesus, all to Jesus, you do not know Jesus. You listen to this broadcast and you are a sinner. I want to invite you to surrender your life to Jesus. The Bible says, for with the heart, man believe under, under salvation and with confession, my God, the, the Bible says, for with the heart, man believe and with the mouth, confession is made under salvation. The Bible says, whosoever believe it on me shall not perish, but have eternal life. I want you to pray with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. In, in desperate need of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Come into my life. From this day, I surrender my life to you. I surrender, Lord. I surrender my life to you. I'm tired of trying to make it work my way. I'm tired of doing it my own way. Forgive me of all my sins. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, your sins have been forgiven. Jesus loves you. Your sins have been forgiven. You are now a child of God. In the eyes of God, He sees you as never doing anything wrong. He loves you with an everlasting love. You are now on your way to heaven. Your sins have been forgiven if you just surrendered your life to Jesus. I want you to type under this video. Say, Pastor Sean, I prayed the sinner's prayer with you. I'm now your brother. I'm now your sister in Christ. I surrendered my life to the Lord Jesus. Friends, and listen, I want to say this. If you didn't have a chance, make sure share this broadcast with someone that you know need this word of encouragement. Someone that's having a hard time. Someone you know that's been under severe attack by the enemy. And you can tell they do not know their rights as a Christian. I ask you, do me a favor. Be the hands of God. Extend it to someone else. And share this message with them. Allow God to use you. Share it on Twitter. Share it on YouTube. Share it on Facebook. Share it on LinkedIn. Share it on Snapchat. Share it on Instagram. Share it on Pinterest. Share it through WhatsApp. Share it through Facebook Messenger. Text the link to somebody. It will be a blessing to them. You know we love you guys. We care about you. And we look forward to coming to you again tomorrow morning on this morning prayer broadcast. We love you guys. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.